Hello and welcome back. I'm going to do a tutorial video for trains, locomotives, and how to set them up in a map. Things have changed a little bit for 19. Uh, everything seems to be based around this placeable system, placeable mechanic. So you don't build the actual locomo locomotive system within the map um, like we have in the past now. It will need to be built into the map, but then it will need to be exported from the map and a placeable will need to be created, which is then loaded in to the game once you actually are in the game. <laughs> it all sounds very complicated. It's not necessarily complicated, it's just very, very time consuming, but that's nothing really new when it comes to, to locomotives or anything that's got splines your traffic splines, your pedestrian splines, and also locomotive splines. Now, the locomotives, I would probably say, are one of the mo most time-consuming for the most part, because, well, again, it would depend on how you're going to set your map up, but because of the length of a locomotive, uh, you're going to need to take into consideration all of the carriages, the wagons, whatever else you want to call them. Uh, it's not just the size of the locomotive, it's everything that's attached behind it. Um, so... You need to obviously create a, a, a track that's going to be big enough to encompass all of those parts. And then you've got your crossings um, and various other different things to take into consideration. Uh, you've got cell points and all that sort of stuff. So what I've got is a sample mod map of which I've taken from Felsbrunn. Um, and what I've done is I've just removed everything from the map itself. Um, and I've just basically got myself a flat level map that I can work with just to kind of give you an idea of how the process is put together. So I've already gone ahead and put the actual track into the map. Uh, this is time consuming in its of its all of its own. So I wanted to kind of lay something out on the map um, just to get a bit of a head start kind of thing. So I've put this down as best I can. It's not perfect by any means, but uh, it will serve a purpose. Uh, so once you've got your track laid out in whatever fashion you want to have it on your map, apologies for the dog, um, then you will need to obviously put all the other parts in and build that up. So what I would do here is import the base game setup. So if we have a look in the installation folder here for FarmSim 19, your installation uh, folder will probably be different to mine. I'm running a disk version. So if you're on Steam, it will be Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and then Farming Simulator 2019. In the data folder, placeables, doesn't matter which one you use, map DE or map US. And then you're looking for train system. So if you go into here, you have your i3D, and the XML and everything else there. That's basically what I'm going to be importing into this particular map. And I'm going to change everything to suit my layout. And then I will need to create my own placeable um, entity objects with all the parts and everything else. And then set the XML up and all that, all that good stuff. So what I'm going to do here then is just go file and then import. And I'm going to basically look for that particular setup that I've just showed you. So again, I'm going to go into my installation folder here and then uh, for the actual farm is 2019. So we want placeables. And I'm just going to use the map US. Again, it doesn't really matter that much. I'm not sure if there's any difference between the uh, design of locomotive. There may be um, a slight difference between the uh, European and the American. So that would be based around whatever map you're going to build. Now, there there is obviously the uh, capability of adding in custom trains or locomotives and whatever else. But uh, again, that's something that uh, I'm not going to get into in this particular video. But uh, you could certainly do that. There's no reason why not. Um, but uh, I'm just going to use the base setup with whatever locomotive comes from the uh, Ravenport map. So I'm going to double click on this I3D, which will then bring everything into the map. And you can see here we have a lot of different uh, crossing points and various other different things that can be then laid around on the map itself. So don't mess around with anything here. You want to really leave 
the actual main transform group at zero because that's what's going to be put into the default items XML, the translation and rotation positions. So you want those to be zero really, and then move everything within it to your desired location. Uh, you probably won't need all of these crossings, but uh, they're there if you choose to use them. Um, so we have a spline, which is from the Ravenport map, whatever this, uh, or however this was set up for the Ravenport map. Uh, so if you use the Felsbrun train system, then that's going to basically look a, a little bit different to this one. Um, now, what you would need to do here is potentially two things. You could either edit this particular spline to fit your train track layout. So I could take the points from this particular um, spline and then rearrange them around the track. That's not probably the way I would do it. Um, you could potentially take you know your start and end points and then start to uh, put them over the track wherever you choose to do so. Uh, so you would take your start point and maybe say, right, I'm going to go from here and then start to manipulate all of the points around. But to me, that seems uh, a longer, a long winded process um, and it can get really complicated. You'll have where as you start to move one, other ones will start to overlap and you'll then get lost within all the different points. Um, so I probably wouldn't do it that way. But uh, again, that's entirely up to you. If you choose to do that, the first thing you're going to need to do is make it visible because it's invisible to the system at the moment. Um, you can see it's grayed out in the scene graph here. You will not be able to edit anything. It doesn't matter what you try and do. As soon as you try and click one of these points, <clears throat> nothing will happen. It will just grab the whole lot or it won't grab anything at all. It won't let you actually select anything. Um, so what you'll need to do is make it visible and then you can come in and select your start or end point and then move that around wherever you want to or any other the, any of the other points within the spline itself. So you could potentially do that. So I might grab the start point, for example, and then find where my track is and then say, right, let's start from here. So I'll come over here, control B and I'll click and that's my start point there. Um, and then I can basically move around from wherever I want to to the next one. So I would either go left or right on my um, arrow keys on my keyboard. Uh, so let's just see which one goes to next. So I would go possibly that one. Let's see which way that went. Yeah, so it would be that one because that's going to go around this way. If I do it the other way, it's going to go to my end point like so. You just have to be a little bit careful on what you're selecting there. Um, so I would go to this one uh, or possibly this one. Yeah, that one. Um, now there are blue and red uh, points. Some people will use the blue, some people will use the red. Uh, I've never really know, known any difference between whichever one you choose to use. Just go with whichever one or all of them or any of them. Um, again, splines are not really my thing, so uh, I don't really, you know, tend to play around with them that much. But you've got one all the way out here now, because we've moved that one all the way over there. We've now got this one here, so um, I would potentially now have to come over and move this one. So again, Control B and put that one somewhere over there. Uh, has it freaked out and crashed on me? No, it just takes a little while. But now this one is all the way over here. Um, it's actually all the way over there. So again, it gets really confusing. So for me, I would probably not do it that way. I would actually delete this entire spline, just remove it and then create a whole new one. So create, go into your uh, taskbar at the top here, create spline, and then you want to take the spline, control X and put it into your transform group. <clears throat> and then basically have that in the same position as it was before because it will need to be set up in a specific way for the XML to locate where it is. So you can then, if you want to put it at the top, the quick way is just select everything here, Control X, click on the transform group, Control V, 
and now it's back at the top again. So I've now got my new spline here. So what I can do is with the entire spline selected, I can find where I want to start off. So let's just say I want to start somewhere here. So I'll go control B and click. And as you can see, it's rotated the wrong way around. So you <clears throat> need to work out which way you want to go with your track. So you might want to have a look around your track and um, possibly think, well, okay, so, so I don't have to rotate it on its axes. I might start over here instead then. Um, so I possibly would come into here and then go control B and click somewhere like that, somewhere in the middle, like so. And then I'm going to basically start here and go all the way around there. So what I would do now then is click on my start point like so. So we're going to go with the blue, the blue dots, the blue inputs. Um, and then I'm going to go <clears throat> insert on my keyboard to insert a new point. And then I'm going to drag out and then I'm going to go insert to insert another new point and just keep going around like that. So what are we on now? Are we on a blue one or a red one? Blue one. So we're going to keep with the blue ones. <clears throat> there are red ones here as well. So we'll go out a bit further and then insert and put another one in. You don't want to put too many, um, you know, just for the sake of putting them in. But when you get to bends and stuff like that, it will help you to get round the bends smoothly with the more uh, the more inputs you have. So like for this one, it's, for this one, I don't need that many inputs here. So I will just basically continue out. Um, looks like we have some sort of a crossing there or something. I'm not sure. I've just used a, a pack that I found so for the track um, and this was laid down relatively quickly just to get it in the video here so uh, it's not like I say it's not perfect you can see there it's not lining up very well there it's a bit flickery but the idea is to show you how to get the placeable side of things working not so much about how to lay the track in the map because that's just a click and place same as any other object so now what I'm going to do is press insert on my keyboard and then I'll drag out insert and drag out and then I need to go around the corners here so I'm just going to drag this one around a little bit and you can see where I've put the point there it now gives it that smooth nice smooth kind of input so again I'll put another insert by pressing the insert on the keyboard or another point and you just keep going around like that and just just keep doing that until you get it where you want it to be let's uh, slow my nav speed down again I'm always good up and down with the damn nav speed <clears throat> so we'll just make this one like so another insert point and then we'll just go a bit further and keep going around with the uh, with the spline and then <clears throat> if you're not sure if the spline is um, on the track itself I, what I've done in the past with uh, traffic splines I'm pretty sure it works with um, tr you know any spline doesn't matter what it is if you lift the spline up and then page down on your keyboard it will put it back down level where it needs to be with the object because it will use the collision mask of the track to put it somewhere level with the uh, with the track itself uh, I tend to find that works quite well you might need to adjust it a little bit but uh, for the most part it will get it where it needs to be because what you don't want to do is go all the way around, right, go all the way around and find that you've got <clears throat> this point up here sorry about the phone and then this point under the map so you can just drag it up, page down, and then do this one, page down. So it just keeps it level where you want it to be. So that's probably what I would say is a good thing there um, to get everything where it needs to be. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit. I mean, I'm not going to do this entire track like this. I've already done it once. That was painful enough. Um, so that's pretty much what you need to do. And then once you've gone all the way around, just bring your start point as close as you can to your end point. So you would end up with your start point somewhere about here. It doesn't matter about there's a little bit of a gap, but you want your start point to go all the way around the track once you've laid it all out and then put it somewhere just so it's close ish to the end point here because the S is your start and the E is your end. So pretty self explanatory. Um, so basically, that's what you kind of want to do have it all laid out where you 
right right the way around the track and then back to here again so you it, it the, the train will basically come around so it will then start wherever that is so if that's here now i'm not sure i can't remember off the top of my head it might be that uh, because that's the start point the train will go around the track that way it will go in that direction so again you need to be a little bit careful um, on where you're placing your start and end points because again like you know a lot of this is common sense but uh, when it comes to anything to do with giants um, I find common sense goes out the window sometimes but to me it would suggest that start point there the train's going to go around that way in an anti-clockwise is that going to be an anti-clockwise no clockwise direction sorry so it'll go around in a clockwise direction get to the end point it will see the start point here and then just do the loop again and just go round and round and round and round. Um, so if you wanted to go in an anti-clockwise direction, you might want to basically flip this around so the start is the opposite to the, you know, the opposite way around sort of thing. Um, so your start point is here and then it's going to go around that way instead, if that makes sense. It's, it's a little bit complicated when it, you know, you're looking at it, but uh, you want to have a bit of a test track first of all to see which way the track's going to go set something up and see which way your train's going to go around the track if that matters to you um and then you know you'll work it you'll be able to work out which way you need to lay the spline down to get it to go around the track the correct direction um okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cheat a little bit i'm going to delete that one uh, let's click on that and delete the whole thing and i'm going to actually import one i've already put together here so let's do desktop uh, we'll go into here and I'm just going to import the spline now this is a little bit off because I've moved some things around but uh, I should be able to line this up again without too much of a problem uh, what I will do first of all what's that one that's fine Doesn't really matter as long as the uh, transform group is zeroed which is like what I said make sure this is zeroed then that will be fine <clears throat> So let's uh, get this somewhere in the right place. Now, again, I've done this, I did this quite quickly, so it's not perfect by any means but it will be good enough <clears throat> to get the train going around the track and show you how it all works that's the theory anyway so let's have a look here Something like that Let's go back this way just a little bit. Maybe a bit too much. It's a bit of a pain. I've wanted to kind of cheat a little bit, make so it wasn't uh, so time consuming, but uh, cheating doesn't always work. Uh, so let's um, do four, five, six, seven. Let's try that. Let's see what that looks like. I'm just moving it on the X axis to try and get it lined up a little bit easier here. Uh, I might need to come up just a little bit. <clears throat> so let's do um, four, three, four. That'll be all right. I'm not bothered if the train's floating a little bit. Again, this is just a, to show you how to set it up. So we should be pretty good there. Let's just get my nav speed up again so I can zip across the map a little bit easier. And we'll just check the rest of it. Should be okay. Yep, that's fine. That's fine. Yep, that should be good enough. Okay, so we're going to control X to cut it, put it into 
this transform group. And I'm going to take all of those and put them into there and more pop ups. GG. So we have that now laid out the way we want it to be. So when the XML looks at this, it's going to see the train spline in the correct index path or node uh, and load that incorrectly. So it's very important you get all of these parts in the right places. Um, it's this one really is to keep this at zero so that uh, you can lay that out in your default items XML just at zero. It just makes it a little bit easier again on that. Um, and then just move everything where you need to be inside because that's the that's the uh, part that it's going to be looking at. That's the part the XML is going to look at uh, as the place for the placeable side of things and take the attributes from here. So everything else within it can be put wherever you want it to be. So let's have a look at what that one is. Uh, OK. So let's just say, for example, then I want to put a crossing somewhere here so we'll just go control b and just see what this one does um, okay so i would have some sort of a crossing piece here possibly um, and then put this somewhere in the middle maybe something like that possibly and then set up my actual crossings individually so <clears throat> Let's see. Um, look at which way these rotate. That way, isn't it? Wouldn't be that way. Yeah, sure it goes that way. That. So, because there's the uh, collision for traffic, so I want to set this. Let's say, for example, so we're going to say we've got a piece of road here, so I want to set this one. like that and this one something like that maybe I'm not going to get too too much into uh, all of this. Just going to do basic stuff here. We'll just do something like that. Let's see what that looks like. So, yeah, that's not too bad because you've got the two collisions there. So those barriers would come down. That should be okay. We'll just do it like that. Something like that. Just going to do the one, I think. Again, I'm not going to get overly excited with them doing loads and loads and loads of these because it's just going to get too much. <clears throat> and we'll see that when we go around the track, we'll see these activate and then the barriers will come down to allow you know, to stop traffic from crossing over the track and whatever else. But you would then put in some sort of a 
crossing point here for the cars to go up over and whatever else. So um, let's just make sure that is in the right place. So let's do that. And we have that. So we're going to make that invisible. We no longer want to edit or change anything on that. And we have our crossing point there. That should be fine. So now you've got to all of this point, um, I'm going to go ahead and save the map anyway. Why not? Um, now you need to create this as a placeable. So you take your name from here, whatever you choose to call it, and we're going to export this out. So I'm going to go export selection with files. Make sure I'm in the right folder here. You might want to set something up as a folder or you know, with it within some sort of folder structure, so you just I don't know, call it placeables or something like that, for example. And then we'll go into here, paste in your name, and save. Um, <clears throat> now, because I'm using the giants setup, I want to keep all the path file names pointing to the game installation folder. So there's no requirement for me to have all of these textures. In my own map folder, uh, they're all just basically giants textures, so it will be duplicating something that I can just point towards the uh, installation folder, and that's most important when you're working with anything to do with console. So if you're making a map for console, uh, make sure that when you get to this point, you keep the parent directory structure and you also keep the game relative paths um, set up correctly. Because all you want here is an i3D with your layout. That's all you need. Um, and if I actually show you in here, so if we go into placeables, all I'm going to have is the train system i3D. And if I open that in Notepad++, everything is pointing to my installation folder, the dollar data, maps, textures, etc., etc. So I don't want to have any of those textures in my map folder. There's no requirement for it. It will just find everything it needs directly out of the... Uh, Farming Sim 2019 installation folder. So now that I've got my i3D, I can basically delete this from the map because I don't need this to be in here anymore. So we're going to basically do that. So we'll just delete it. Um, and then I'm going to save the map again. <clears throat> and we'll close that down. So the next part then what I need to do is <clears throat> go into um, We'll keep that there for now, that doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go back into the uh, installation folder here and I want to go to my, um, the same place I showed before, which is in the placeables, uh, map US train system. And I'm going to take this XML, make a copy of that and put that into my folder here. And then in here, I need to change the file name to point to my i3D. So for me, this is going to be maps placeables. So um, you can do this however you want. I'm just going to drag this down a little bit so I can actually see the file name here. So we've got placeables, so that's fine. I don't need any of that stuff. So I can get rid of that because it's just placeables. And then I can change the data here with maps like so. And then I need to set up all the other stuff here because we've got all these different rail crossings and various other different things. So where I said before about the spline, need to make sure that that's set up correctly. So we have node zero, which is what I had it set up as. Uh, if you remember in the actual um, map, I said about the hierarchy of the actual system here. So if we look in here, the train spline itself is index zero which refers to this node zero here. Um, these are the, this is the vehicle that's going to be loaded in, the train. So if you have any custom ones, this is where you would set all that up, but they need to be set up with their own individual XMLs and so on and so on. Again, not going to get into any of that stuff. And then we have our rail crossing. So I only have the one rail crossing, which is going to be uh, node zero one or one in this case. Uh, so, I think, if I'm right in saying so, first one doesn't get included. 
because it's some um, fake one for some reason i don't know why that's what that's all about so i'm just going to i'm coming to here i'm going to highlight that and i'm going to go down to <clears throat> there yeah to there and i'm going to delete all of those because i don't need any of those because they're not in this particular map so i'm going to change that to a one so if we look at this the index is one there the number on the end of the index path so that's one that's fine and then we need to figure out all of this other stuff here so if we look in here <clears throat> so we've got one zero zero so it's just basically taking the because it starts at two it uses the first one as a fake again for whatever reason so all of these are just going to be ch changed to, to one so we look at this we've got one zero zero one zero one and then the actual um parts here the lights and everything are they yeah the alternating lights so two zero two uh, let's have a look one zero two so it's just going to become a one zero two and then that would become um two zero uh, sorry two one so have a look what we've got in here so yeah so one one two instead of it being two one two it'll be one one two so i'm just going to change all of these to a one 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 and one uh, and then we've got sounds link node two and that link node points back to this one the root node so we need to change that to a one um, and that's pretty much that. So for this particular system or setup, it's just going to be the one crossing. Um, we've got our train system there, so that's fine. Uh, and everything else there should be okay. So we don't need to change that. More pop-ups. Awesome. Um, can't buy it or sell it. So this needs to be set up. Can't, cannot be sold. And... Um, Oh, sorry, can be sold false and show in store false because we don't want to be able to sell our train system. <clears throat> uh, everything else there, I'm pretty sure, should be set up correctly. Just make sure we have a link. Yep, we do. Fantastic. So that's good. So we can go ahead and close that down. All of that should be set up correctly. So we can close that one down as well. And then what I need to do is just tell the um, default items xml where all of this is so if we go back into here default items there's a lot of different stuff in here i'm, go I'm not going to need any of that stuff so i'm going to basically delete all of that and we'll delete all of this because i don't need any of that either because i'm not going to have any of that on this particular map because i've leveled the map out if i was to include all of that stuff it would basically be floating in the air or under the map or whatever else so it's just not worth it so i'm just going to get rid of everything and then if we look in here, this is the path file name to the um, map DE because I've based this map around the Felsbrunn, but that's not relevant uh, to me either. So I'm going to need to basically change all of that. So in here, because this is going to be in my map directory, it wants to be dollar map dir as in map directory, and then dollar, and then it wants to be <clears throat> so my map directory. And then maps, placeables, and then train system XML. So again, if you're not sure, just put that up there and drag this down or whatever else you need to. So you can copy it all out. So again, I've got placeables in there already. So I can just do like so. And then in here, if Notepad++ is going to behave, I'm going to type in there maps. So it's map directory, maps, and then placeables. Uh, and then train system dot xml and as i said before about the position and rotation if you leave the main transform group at zero there's no requirement to change any of that and i'd highly, rec highly recommend to do it that way uh, because it might get all balked if you don't if you start putting moving the main transform group all around the map things might might not spawn in the right places i've always left mine at zeros and it's always worked perfectly fine so I'm going to basically save that and then 
because I've used one that's already created the item map bound ID and the class name, these are important. You need to make sure that they are set correctly. So just use the examples from your installation folder. If you're not sure, just go back into your installation folder and find where the um, items XML is. So if we go into here, we'll go to the items XML, find the train system, make a copy of that line, put it in your default items XML or whatever you've chosen to call that and then uh, edit this accordingly. But uh, these parts at the beginning here, make sure that they are set correctly for the train system. Otherwise it won't work properly again. So let's uh, come on now, behave. Um, I want that one. I keep forgetting when I'm in um, using OBS, it deactivates my arrow or whatever it's called. So the folders don't work the same, but uh, that's fine. Okay, so we're going to close that one down. So that's all linking into here. And this XML is linking into my i3D. So that should load in OK. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is get rid of all of these because I don't want any of this stuff. Because again, that's not relevant for this particular sample mod map. And I'll end up with tractors floating in the sky or spawning under the ground. Um, so I think the next thing then is to test this out and make sure it works. Uh, so let's um, put this into um, so many folders with all sorts of stuff in here. Um, um, So let's do another folder then. Mods, not modes, mods. And let's put that into there, like so. Turn my volume down on my speakers and then we'll get into game and hopefully I should be able to spawn into that train and drive it around the map. That's the idea anyway, hopefully. Let's see what happens. Uh, one thing that uh, I did find, um, which was really important, um, the actual map must have farmland set up on it. If it doesn't have any farmland set up, the actual triggers won't work properly. So just be a little bit careful with that. Let's make sure I'm in the right one. Sample mod map one, continue. Yeah, okay, good. Um, I found that out the hard way after spending like four days trying to figure out why the barriers wouldn't work properly. Um, it turned out I hadn't painted down the farmland in that particular area of the map. I had done some of it over the other side, uh, but not in that particular area and the triggers for the actual barriers wouldn't work. So the train would go around, the locomotive would go around the map I could drive the locomotive, but the barriers wouldn't come down. The lights flash and everything else, but the barriers themselves wouldn't work. So just be a little bit careful with that as well. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Now, if I got, I can't remember if I've got, um, oh, I've got this set up. Um, I'm sure there's a way in here to set this up so that uh, you can tab to locomotives. Now my, there we go, switch to trains on. There we go. <clears throat> we are now in a train. Uh, don't seem to have any textures on the track for some reason. But uh, <laughs> otherwise, the train is working. So, um, can I slow it down? Yes, I can. There we go. So I'm now slowing the train down. And I go into cruise control and I can honk the horn and everything else, all of the, the, uh, the goodness. And then if we come to here, the barriers are down. So if I jump out, you can see the barriers have actually come down, which is the problem I was having. And if hopefully the train gets out of my way, we'll see them go back up again. No, let's go a bit further.
probably gone up already, I expect. Nope. <laughs> it's gonna be a gonna be one of those, isn't it? It's not gonna Actually, what I'll do then is um, let's just do the other way. We'll go backwards so I don't have to run so far. See if that works. I just want to show the track, the, the uh, barriers going up. And I'll have a look at those textures because I'm not sure why they're not showing up. Come on out there we go and the barriers go up there we go so that's um again because i've got farmland painted down now so if i actually show you we go into here and switch over to farmland the whole map is just one farmland uh, that was the easiest way i could do it just to show you all the parts there um but uh the train is working it's in the map as a placeable now it's a bit floaty as i said the actual splines you may need to adjust some things there uh, it's not quite on the track. It's lined up not too bad, just a little bit high. So I might have a bit of a look at that as well. So let's just exit out of this then and let's see why those textures aren't working properly. Because <clears throat> that'll annoy me. And we'll just lower the spline down just a little bit and uh, try that again. So let's have a look. Um, Now, I'm just trying to work out. <clears throat> Textures. Oh, they're there. Let's have a look. Here's Yeah, definitely working there. So why are they not working in the map? In game. Uh, let's do. Error. Uh, 2019 railroad import rail tracks. OK, so. It appear. The. Uh, <clears throat> file name for the tracks has got a bit bulked somehow. Let's have a quick look at that, see what that's all about. Um, That should be okay now. That should be fine now. Okay, so let's save that then. Um, now, obviously, the actual. Um, what's that? Uh, does not have required vertex attributes. Okay, interesting. Tangent. Okay. That's why. That should be better now. Tangent. Tangent, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's just um stuff from seventeen is a bit I used some tracks from 17 to lay all this out and uh, the differences in how the uh, mesh is set up is a little bit weird. Um, well, it's not weird, that's the wrong word to use. It's just different from what it is in 17 to 19. It's just getting used to how, they, how the changes are all implemented now. 
Um, anyway, Irregada. So with this flying, because it was slightly high, um, the only way I can really figure that out is to re-import it again. So what I would do here is just go file, import. Uh, actually, before I do that, let's just save the map here so it's updated those uh, textures. And then what I'll do is I'll re-import the uh, um, placeable here. So we'll re-import it. And then we'll activate or make the spline visible again, like so. Let's just come over here and we'll just lower it down just a little bit. So just kind of eyeball it, I guess. So let's do um, 80.23, yeah, something like that. And this is going to be a little bit trial and error. Try and error. You're going to have to have a bit of a play around with that and just get it where you want it to be. Um, so what we would need to do now, though, because this is not the one that uh, is in the map itself. Um, well, this one's in the map, but the placeable isn't. I would now need to go into the placeable one. So I'm going to open this one separately and take the 80.3 and put into this one. So I'll click on the spline here and change that one to 80.3 and then save that one because that's the one that gets loaded into the map. <clears throat> and then this one can be deleted and I can close the map down because I've already saved it. So now we go back into game again. A lot of backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, testing things and just double checking areas. Um, so we'll go back into here again and just wait for everything to catch up. Because for some reason this freaks my game out with OBS. Don't know why. There we go. <clears throat> so we'll go back into the map again. We'll check our textures are working okay. And we'll also check the uh, height of the spline. So we go to train and there we go. Our textures are now working. And the height of the train is, well, not too bad, actually. That's pretty good. It's not perfect. But again, all of these things take a little bit of time to uh, get in the right places and everything else. But that's pretty good. That's not too bad. It's not, you know, where it was before. It's much better than it was before. It's actually kind of sat relatively uh, close to the track now. I think that's not too bad at all. So again, we get in the train. <clears throat> Activate the cruise control and we're off again. So <clears throat> how to get the train into a map using the placeable system. Um, obviously, once you've got this far, then you need to set up all of your um, cell points and uh, all the other various parts that go with this. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of a lot of um, stuff that needs to be done when it comes to FS19 and the, th and the way things are put into the maps with the placeable system and whatever else. Um, it's all doable. It's just, uh, you know, learning the new ways and working with it and uh, <clears throat> setting it up. But as I've mentioned already, uh, splines are just very, very time consuming. They are one of my um, hates to do traffic splines and train splines and all the other things. And I think that's going to run out of steam before it gets where I want it to be. But you can see the barriers are working again anyway. The lights are all working um, and sounds and various other different things. So, yeah, there we go. Um, don't really know what else to show in this particular setup here. Um, this is just really what I wanted to show you how to get the train into a map. Um, like I said, I've cheated a little bit with the track, with the actual spline itself. But to do this entire section took me a really long time to do it the first time around so i wasn't about to do that actually um you know while recording because it's just it's just a it's just a very very time consuming process but like i said before what i would do is work with um don't use the spline that you import from the um train system delete that one and create your own start from scratch and go around the entire layout that you've got by adding in all of the different points using the insert key on your keyboard and then use the page down function to level out each point as you go around um, 
and then once you're happy with everything you know keep your main transform group at zero on your attributes translate and rotate move everything else where you want it to be within that transform group so move your spline where it needs to be or create your new spline where it needs to be move your barriers and set them up wherever you need them to be um, and then just change whatever needs to be changed in the XML point it towards your i3d and then set your default items XML up to find that XML and so on and so forth hopefully what I've shown in the video here will give you a direction to go in um, <clears throat> it is a a bit of a um, what's the word I'm looking for here I have a word but again it's one of those words I can't use <laughs> they are yeah <laughs> I have lots of those words when it comes to FS19 um, it's a bit of a challenge to get going to start off with but once you start to work with it um, just a bit of practice and it will then start to come together and don't forget your farmlands on your map because otherwise your barrier triggers won't work um, but uh, there we go I'm sure wizard thanks very much for watching I'll catch you on the next one